this um, public hearing on the J.C. Booth Middle School. Um, we need a, a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? And I know before we uh, hear from the public, we have a presentation. We do. Um, Ms. Hollowell, we've uh, been sharing information all along for quite some time and certainly want to continue to do that. Uh, we have a presentation that we have uh, pulled together. Mr. Sanders and uh, Mr. Statterfield are going to come and share that presentation with you. Um, and uh, I'll ask these gentlemen to come on down and, and just so that we can be able to give a, a good starting spot for those who are just coming to the meeting a little bit late or coming to the conversation a little bit late, we certainly want to share the information that we have uh, provided uh, publicly. Mr. Sanders. Thank you, Dr. Barrett. Um, as Ms. Sykes is, is pulling that presentation up, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start off to talk a little bit about our five-year facilities plan. Uh, as you all, all well know that um, many, many of the projects that we do are based off that five-year plan. And, and it is exactly that. It is a plan uh, for, for renovation and uh, modification of facilities where we earn state dollars, our uh, capital outlay funds from. And uh, over since 2013, we, we went back and, and started in 2013, really picked that as the time that, that Dr. Barrow was coming on board. And, uh, and while this list is a, a lengthy list of, uh, of facilities that we have renovated and done work to during the time uh, from 2013. Those are just the ones from our five-year facilities plan. There are many other projects we have done uh, that are not in that, that plan, but these are, these are primary ones. And, and obviously, we're not going to go through and read all those, but the, this facilities plan is developed uh, by a team. Uh, Mr. Satterfield leads it. Uh, he and I work, work closely with our DOE uh, consultant, uh, John Ramage, and, uh, and then uh, also our architects in making sure that we maximize our funding. And the biggest projects on there that, uh, that draw the, the biggest number of dollars in uh, capital outlay will be the roof, anything, any project that has roofing and, and HVAC in it. So you see uh, from uh, McIntosh High School new roof um, all the way down at the bottom there, Peachtree City Elementary Gym Replacement Media Center. And okay, if you'll go to the next slide. And, and all of these were pr pretty much in order. And one thing to keep in mind with the five-year the five facility plan is this, that, that it is a fluid plan. It can and will change. And a great example of that is the Huddleston Elementary uh, renovation that we did. That was an emergency. Uh, had some issues with, with mold uh, that, uh, that it couldn't wait until it, its turn. So when we moved that, that project up, then that delayed uh, in particular, uh, Fayette County High renovation uh, by a couple of years, and uh, as you well know, we just uh, we just completed that renovation. So there are the other the other projects that are they're on there, and uh, the last one is the one that you just recently approved about a month ago, the Oak Grove Elementary renovations, and we put out there on that one that that one's in progress, um, and that will be the, uh, the the addition of the new gym, uh, the admin. Uh, wing as well as the, the general renovation and uh, we'll, we'll receive our capital outlay money on that. So we just wanted to, to kind of give it a quick overlook of, the, of what we've done with the five-year facilities plans over the last uh, six years and kind of how that process works. And, uh, and now Mr. Satterfield will go through with you and the public uh, with the, the presentation that we had presented to you a couple of weeks ago. Good evening. We'll uh, go through. This is basically the same presentation that we've made to the board on a, a couple of times uh, dealing with uh, J.C. Booth. You know, initially uh, we, we had proposed a pretty extensive renovation, and when we met with the board, the direction from the board was to try to address some of the issues with the core facility and basically to have a what we refer to as a transformational renovation. Uh, there were a number of issues uh, uh, core related. Uh, the gym was too small, cafeteria, fine arts areas, hallways, things of that nature. And, and so with the, the uh, 
option one, we tried to address all of those issues. You could uh, change the slide. Uh, this is just an overview, bird's eye view of the existing facility. And uh, of course, option number one is to renovate and modernize the existing facility there on Peachtree Parkway. Uh, scope of work. Uh, the design was to be transformational. Uh, we did want to increase the classroom space for 1,400 FTE. Um, and, and these are the same uh, issues that we spoke about last time. I won't bother to go through and read all of them. Uh, but there's basically two pages worth there, uh, items uh, under the scope of work. Uh, this is an aerial. Uh, the, the darker images, uh, most of which are, are to the upper portion of the screen, that uh, dark copper look, that would be the new additions to the school under the transformation renovation. Um, we were adding new classroom space, a new front office area, a new gymnasium, uh, also a long uh, hallway uh, against the existing building, which was basically going to become the main hallway of the existing building to help uh, alleviate the traffic concerns that we have due to the small hallways, uh, particularly in it going in and out of the pods. Okay. All right, this was the uh, proposed floor plan. Um, this addition would be going off the north side of the building. Basically, it had been located on where the existing football field is now, and the football field would have been relocated to the south side of the school. Uh, here's just a few elevations. Uh, there's a front elevation, a rear, and a couple of side elevations there. The bottom one is, is an elevation showing uh, the new hallway that would go down the side of the building. Uh, option number two uh, was to construct a school to be a replacement for the existing J.C. Booth Middle School. Uh, it would also have 1,400 FTE uh, and be built on 37 acres, which is located on Stagecoach Road in Peachtree City. Of course, this would be grades six through eight. Um, we, we're not going to go through the architectural plans here. It, it's pretty similar to Bennett's Mill Middle School, except the size has been increased. And we've also met with the staff at J.C. Booth and made some changes in the vocational areas and fine art areas, increased the size there to handle the large programs that they have. But if anyone's interested, you can go to this and, and click on and, and see all the architectural plans for the project. Um, this is an aerial view. Uh, um, you, you've got uh, running right to left is the Stagecoach Road, which is currently a gravel road. Um, the school and the football field would be located south of, of that road. And there's also a large uh, practice field area on the south side between the two creeks. The drive coming uh, away from the school is the new carriage lane drive, that drive that will connect the carriage lane. Okay. Uh, this is just a, a floor plan uh, of the facility with a couple of, of elevations there. Like I say, it's very similar to, to Bennett's Mill. All right, and then uh, this is just a breakdown uh, of construction costs. Um, you know, basically, as we said at the last meeting, the transformational all-in cost for it um, was approaching forty million, and for option two, the replacement school, the all-in cost was approaching forty-six million for the option number two. One of the biggest questions that I know Mr. Satterfield, Mr. Sanders had, we've had 
multiple meetings where we had met with uh, uh, the staff, we had met with parents on the PTO and uh, school council committees. Uh, we had had a public meeting uh, of that community and probably one of the most uh, frequent questions uh, that those guys received was what would happen to the uh, old J.C. Booth Middle School uh, if a replacement school is built. And, um, you know, the, the whole notion about purchasing property and uh, looking at opportunities in the future, uh, there have been, been lots of ideas that have thrown uh, up on the wall and see what would stick. And uh, one of the ones that uh, seems to be the, the most common, and I, I probably need to give you just a little bit of context with this, uh, we meet uh, at least quarterly, sometimes more frequently, with all of the planning and zoning uh, groups from the municipalities and from the county and get a sense of what type of growth is happening all throughout the community. And uh, we do that uh, as a matter of uh, planning, uh, advanced planning. Now, we don't go out and uh, react to every single thing that's on the drawing board, we, uh, but it's prudent for us to understand and know that. And if you've been um, reading our local media newspapers and you've been listening to the conversation that's taking place, I think everyone knows that uh, there's going to be some new development here in Fayetteville, um, particularly with some new apartments that are coming in, those kinds of things there. Um, if that happens, uh, we have a building in town that we just need to repurpose to take care of um, the elementary students, and that's where we currently have our center of innovation or what is typically referred to as the Fayette Intermediate School. So, um, okay, if you'll pull on down, you can take a peek at that. That's, that's a picture of the school um, that we would need to do some work on. Uh, in order to reopen it again for the elementary school. Now, folks, I want to be real clear. This We're not doing this uh, tomorrow. This would be a year to two years down the road, depending upon how quick the enrollment grew based on the development here in Fayetteville. Um, the next issue that we've been looking at is dealing with the growth that's happening out in the West Village. Uh, in Peachtree City, and then, of course, the work that's going on in Tyrone. Uh, I think everybody recognizes we had to close this school, and, and one of the primary reasons, uh, it was undersized based on enrollment, but the primary reason the school had to be closed was because of uh, the sewer and the septic tanks. We had two systems on the property. One had already failed and couldn't be repaired. Uh, the second one was on its last leg. So the issue there primarily with the school was um, uh, the, the lack of effective sewer. Well, I, I think folks know and understand that Tyrone is working on that. In fact, they've already put this project out to bid for bringing sewer downtown. Uh, it's my understanding that a contract is there and they're going to start work probably sometime in November. So we've got crowding, uh, I say crowding, we've got growth that's happening in Peachtree City where Crabapple Lane, Kedron, Peachtree City Elementary, uh, we don't have a lot of growth opportunity there. So uh, we're looking at the potential of opening Tyrone after some modifications there. Uh, again, not happening tomorrow, not even on the driving, not on, not on the drawing board, but uh, you got to have some sense of direction of where you want to go. So if we're looking at that, um, and we're looking at opening FIS again, uh, the question is what are we going to do with Fayette uh, Intermediate where we have our center of innovation? Um, our goal would be to potentially look at repurposing Booth Middle School for that center of innovation. If, okay, if you'll scroll on down, we've had uh, conversations with um, uh, both of, I say both, two of our uh, post-secondary uh, institutions, both Southern Crescent and also with Clayton State, about the possibility of this happening. Uh, both of our college presidents are, are very much um, uh, interested in us proceeding with these uh, conversations. These letters are just 
to let you know that it's not some pie in the sky. We've had this conversation multiple times, and we've also had some conversations in addition to uh, the post-secondary institutions also with the Chamber of Commerce and many of our folks in the business community that are very supportive of that notion. So when the question is asked what would happen to the, to the current booth, uh, there is a, a good skeleton conversation going on about the possibility of moving that forward. Um, so uh, the monies that we would receive from the capital, state capital outlay money, they would still be used to renovate the current booth Primarily, our funding for the uh, replacement school uh, would be uh, funded from East Blast and some capital outlay do dollars here locally. So that's pretty much the long and short uh, of the circumstances. And I know the... Um, hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir, please do. It's related to um, the schools that we're not using right now. Um, you didn't have a Fayette Middle on the list. Yes, sir. And uh, have, there's, has there been consideration to maybe repurposing that as the elementary if needed or the center of innovation if needed? Sure. Because I think we have about 100 kids there for the various programs. Well, we right now, Dr. Marchman, we actually have four different groups there. We have our open campus. We have our alternative school. Uh, we have our mainstay or GNETS program. And we also are housing AV Pride after school program there. So we have pretty much... Uh, now, the, the numbers are not large, but the programs um, are pretty significant, and we can't put those programs just anywhere. We've got to have enough real estate to be able to spread those programs out, and um, uh, that's working very, very well for us there. That's not to say that it couldn't be repurposed for some other reason. I know one of the questions that we've worked to try to address in our Q and A, and and folks, I'll I'll share with you as we have questions. I know I received some today about noon. I haven't been able to answer all those just yet, uh, but we're going to continue to answer questions. We want to make a good decision. That's uh, I know our board wants to, um, and we're trying to take everything into consideration as we move into this. That's the purpose of the. Um, public hearing this evening but I, I don't know if I answered your question Dr. Yeah, yeah. Marshman there but uh, that would um, and the only other uh, facility that the board currently owns is down at Brooks and and uh, Liberty Tech is there now and they're they're in that facility so are they leasing um, the whole building, I'm sorry. Are they leasing the whole building? Uh, yes sir and that whole facility uh, they're using that so all of our uh, facilities would then be accounted for and being used um, uh, effectively if all of these things fell into place. Um, I want to I wanna be real clear in that we're not going out and spending money uh, on new facilities uh, and or renovations if we don't have the enrollment. That's the, uh, we're in a good position to be able to handle that um, and um, I know uh, some folks that I've had conversations with, and I, I talk to a lot of people. Some people are very supportive. Um, I have a few that express concerns. Uh, one of the concerns that, that, that comes up uh, is, you know, we had a, a Rivers Elementary that was built, and we never fully occupied that school. Um, I can't speak to that a whole lot. That was prior to my time. I will say this. Our, our look at our facilities plan is not based on risk. It's based on what we currently have today. The replacement school um, for Booth, we have over 1,200 students there already. Uh, we're looking at a replacement school. The old Booth would then be used for the Center of Innovation. So uh, that's our thinking about uh, uh, the possible facility use. Are there any other um, questions from board members for staff before we get to the public comments? No, okay. Well, let's go ahead and get to the uh, public comments. Um, uh, comments must be limited to three minutes. The goal is to allow as many people to speak as possible. Speakers are not allowed to relinquish their time to another speaker. Vulgar language or personal abuse against any person will not be allowed. The chairman um, has the discretion to terminate the presentation of a speaker who violates these guidelines. Um, let's go ahead and, and get started. And the, uh, the first on my list is Brad Williams. 
Good evening. Thank you for the time to be here. I appreciate the job that you guys do for our community. I know you have a, a, a challenging role to serve to our community, so I do appreciate that and respect that. But I'm just here to, to start off, and I'll get straight to the point and tell you I, I'm in opposition to this relocation uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first of which, which got my attention, was because I live on Carriage Lane. And this is going to radically transform my life, the coming and going uh, down my street. Uh, I cannot imagine what that's going to be like. Uh, I can only imagine that it's going to be nightmarish. Um, secondly, though, uh, and this is I, as I step back from it and thinking more broadly of the impact of the community across uh, that end of town, you begin to think, I begin to see that beyond just my perspective and just beyond the impact it has on my personal life, that this is a bad idea for our community for a number of reasons. And the way I look at it is, first of all, is that of design. I'm a designer by trade. That's what I do in the retail world. And as I look at it from a design perspective, I think schools being central to the community that they serve is paramount for a good urban design. You're relocating a school out on the edge of our city. It's not currently accessible. It's a half mile from a nearest paved road. And, and it's surrounded by woods. Uh, it's, so it's going to have to have a lot of infrastructure to access it and to get to that uh, location. So I challenge that. And then I also challenge just the, just again, the urban planning that goes into this and the fact that it's no longer walkable, it's no longer cartable, it's inaccessible in many locations. You have now a four-lane access road and you're going to a two-lane access road. And then I ask about the questions about um, total cost of impact or total impact cost. I think about new construction. Uh, I've been in and out of the construction business, uh, again, in retail world my whole life. So I understand those costs. Uh, I can't imagine that this is going to be uh, the most effective cost uh, uh, beneficial to, uh, to the community. But I think about beyond that, the road impacts, the improvements that will have to be made, the car access that will have to be built, the intersection improvements that will have to be made to, to make Carriage Lane and 54 accessible for that much traffic that's going to pass through there on a daily basis. And I just can't imagine how uh, this could play out as a benefit to, to as a relocation based when you compare it to the current location of Booth being central to our community that it serves. So again, I know you have a problem to solve. It's not easy, but I'd urge you, I urge you to consider if we in fact need another middle school, that middle school should be on the west side of town where all the new homes are being constructed and not on the side of town where there's no new growth currently. Thank you. Thank you. Danny Dolan. Hello. <clears throat> um, you know, we've met. I um, uh, just wanted to uh, mention, <clears throat> uh, you mentioned uh, Rivers Elementary School, and I looked it up in the, uh, according to the Citizen, in 2012 they wrote that uh, it was built at a cost of $10 million, including land and buildings. Uh, now, we're told in this case that we should discount the cost of the land because it's already purchased. But um, still, even at that, a jump from 10 million to 40 million is not insignificant, just comparing. I know there are differences, but, you know, a building here, building there, um, it, it, it should give pause. Um, I don't believe that 40 years old is old for a building. These are not made of sticks and straw. Um, you know, the, the cinder block construction and Macintosh is, is roughly as old as I understand it. I went to both schools. I went back to uh, Macintosh for my high school reunion. And that school is looking very good, especially that, uh, in good part to that upper cord corridor connector. Those. Uh, Built, those uh, initial uh, bumps about the architecture have been dealt with. Um, but I am worried about uh, what software people, uh, my business, call feature creep in the renovation. Um, I saw an article today in the Citizen, an editor, letter to the editor uh, from the person who was the, one of the um, chairman of the East Bloss campaign, and he uh, 
gave his opinion that the projects being proposed for Booth are outside of the scope of what was initially improved, approved by the voters. And that is a concern. Uh, when I mention to people that I, I, I'm going uh, talking to the Board of Education on these things, they, they uh, very often tell me uh, there's no point in talking to them. The fix is in. It's already set, settled. But I hear from you that no decision has been made. I want to believe you. Please make me believe you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Larry Manwaring. Thank you very much. And I, too, respect what you do. But I hope you will reconsider building this school. Uh, when I was in high school, senior year, the football team, the season's over, we decided to get together. We met in the woods in an old log cabin. Some of us got to thinking, wouldn't it be cool to get some liquor and some alcohol? One young man, though, stepped up. And he said, Roger Zachary was his name. And he said, no, guys, that might not be the thing to do. And he, he changed the direction. I've always respected his courage and the direction that he provided for us. And I'd encourage you to dare to step up this evening as you consider this and in the days to come ahead. And uh, here are the reasons that, that I'd ask you to do that. First of all, we don't need a new school. Our numbers are pretty consistent. Our students are taken care of in the situation where they are now. Uh, the school will probably cost over $50 million before it's over when you talk about overruns and everything else and roads and infrastructure. Is it worth the price? Um, I do hear that Booth has narrow halls and few windows, and it's old. But Peachtree City Elementary is older and McIntosh is only two years older, does that mean that in a couple of years from now we'll need to replace McIntosh High School and the other schools? I don't think so. Um, another reason that I'd ask you to reconsider. There's no definitive plan for what to do with the present Booth Middle School. We just heard that a minute ago. There's some possibilities. There are some things that are being discussed and so on. But that changes, and it's changed frequently. Uh, we've had all, and it depends upon a number of things that are out of your control. Uh, so we're looking at a possibility. The latest is that the school system would use the current facility to expand educational offerings with an internship and secondary institution. If that firm, is that firm, and is there a partnership with that group, and how long will it last? Furthermore, will it require a costly renovation of Booth for it to be suitable for that institution? And if it is going to be a cost something, how much will it cost? And most importantly, the reason I asked you to consider is the safety of the children. One road in and one road out creates a dangerous situation. Okay. I ask you to have the courage of my friend Roger Zachary and reconsider this. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to uh, make a comment? Come on up. Just state your name and address. My name is Kristen Smith. You know my address? Yep. Is that what you said? I live in Interlochen, 124 Interlochen Drive. So I have four children on all, at all three levels of the school system. And if you have been in Booth, I'm pro rebuilding a new school. I think that Booth has a lot to be desired. My child has been in the band for, I've had two children go through the band there, and one of them plays the band, the drums, in the foyer because there's no room in the actual band room for them to play the instrument, which with all the safety things that people should be worried about, we put all these new fancy gadgets in and need license and all this. If somebody walks in the school, my kid's there before 
the first adult is even there. My kid's victim one if something happens. Also, the idea of doing some massive transformative renovation with my children in the building doesn't seem like a great plan. And I'm sorry for the people that live down that street. I do think you guys have to figure out some of those details. And I think you should get some bus drivers in and have them figure out that they're going to be able to make those turns and it's going to be safe in the winter. That all needs to be considered. But I live in Interlochen. I live just a few houses down from where the all, every kid who's or half the kids that are going to McIntosh pass through the back end of McIntosh the, of Interlochen to drive up. It's inconvenient for about 30 minutes in the morning. You drive on the other side of the street and it's inconvenient for a little bit in the afternoon. And if it's, it's not that big of a deal. There's houses that live right across the street from McIntosh High School and they do just fine, which is more students than Booth would be. So I don't think it destroys home values. No, it's not woods, you're right, but it never is gonna be woods. It's been purchased. It's going to be something. So it's either a school or it's a shopping center, it's stores, it's a freaking Walmart. It's something eventually. So I think that the, what the children need is you go to other counties, much smaller counties, and they have these amazing facilities. And my kid's playing the drums in foyer. So I think it can be done better. The hallways are super narrow. You literally can't stand with, with the kids coming the other way. You, all the kids can't sit in the cafeteria. You can't go to a, anything in the, in the gym because you can't fit. You're squeezed together just to do a band thing, never mind an assembly for the school. So I think that the best way to do is a whole new school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Scott? Hello, I'm Scott Austinson, 301 uh, Land O'Lake Court in Peachtree City. I'm gonna, I do respect what you do, but I'm going to speak really quickly, and I apologize for that. But I do want to respond to a little bit of what I heard tonight. So my prepared comments we're going to talk about, just follow up to what I talked to you about last time. Student achievement. Has anyone talked about how Booth failed in the progress score? And I suggested to you that was because you had 1,000 students. Now you're going to go to 1,400. Please look at the academic scores and make sure that you're not going to make a problem worse with respect to academic achievement. I talked to you about safety. Are you sure that having 1,400 kids in a middle school is safe? Remember I showed you the picture of two stabbings in a middle school of teachers in their classrooms. I'm not suggesting that Fayette County kids are violent. I'm just suggesting please take the time to make sure that a giant middle school is the appropriate environment for kids. Thirdly, I talked about safety with respect to the traffic. I think that's been talked about. What I didn't talk about before, because that was a budget meeting, was road access. Now, contrary to what you just heard, I appreciate the comments, but if you have not driven on Carriage Lane before, I suggest you do that. You will find that it is absolutely a spider trail compared to the massive highway access that the existing booth has. Now, let me get to the two points. The first point, Mr. Satterfield said that his comparison was $42 million to $46 million. That is patently wrong. If you look at your own presentation, which I got off your website, it's $33 million versus $46 million. I would, and that's a $12 million difference, I would, in fact, add the land. That's a $16 million difference, and that's just using your numbers. Not to mention the fact that I do believe that there's a better way to utilize capital outlay funding. I will tell you that Fayette County is, in fact, not waiting for student growth to drive they're building because if you were you'd be having the state fund up to 80 percent of all of your new school projects so I I do get that that was a summary comment and I'm not calling anyone out but I'm saying it's a very technical point and I do think that Fayette County could do a better job of considering how to better utilize capital outlay funds and you know, this whole idea of not closing booth means you're going to have a massive number of instructional units that will be in your inventory and you will no longer qualify for entitlement of capital outlay. So you'll be blocked from having future monies for your future development. Oh, I did that in 38 seconds. I hope you understood what I said. Um, the other point that I was going to make is that Southern <laughs> Crescent is great. But Southern Crescent is not a K-12 school. So I'm not even sure that the comment about spending our capital outlay money on a Southern Crescent mixed-use, partly college facility is appropriate. I think what you should do is step back, consider phasing out booth, getting those instructional units out of your inventory so that you can engender more enrollment growth monies from the state. And they will, as I say, fund up to 
80% of all approved projects. Right now, your plan is to spend nothing in state right. money. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry I was so okay. fast. Anyone else would like to make a comment? Yes. Okay, just approach the podium and just state your name and address. Ted Masters, 108 Belvedere Lane, Peachtree City, Georgia. Okay. A couple of questions regarding the proposed new school. Um, I'd like to address the traffic situation. Uh, but first off, has is it, is a decision been made as to whether we're going to have a new school or we're going to remodel? Uh, no vote has been taken. Okay. Um, is What consideration has been given for the traffic regarding the new school? I mean, there's a tremendous amount of traffic that attends uh, Booth Middle School now. You're at a divided highway, a boulevard, and it's... Uh, accommodates a whole lot more traffic than Robinson Road, which is just a two-lane highway. And you're near 54, which is one of the highest traveled roads around here. And I'm just concerned about how we're going to handle all this traffic. We've had no traffic studies I'm aware of. Is that right? No, there was a, there was a preliminary one, but... Now, how would school buses be routed? How would... Uh, uh, passenger traffic be routed, dropping off, picking up kids from school. There's a tremendous amount of that. I've seen times when traffic's been back up from Booth School to 54. And that's on a highway that allows other traffic other than the people that are sitting there waiting for either drop off or pick up. Uh, what is the traffic pattern proposed for this if it becomes a reality? You said your last name was Masters? Yes, it is. I, I'm, I just wanted to be sure. Yes. I, I, sometimes I can't hear. We've done some initial uh, traffic studies. Our engineers have done that. But really the, the bulk of that work uh, has not been fully completed because that's going to be done with DOT and, and also with uh, working with our municipality, Peachtree City. Um, if the board decides not to do that, we're not going to invest those dollars in developing a lot of plans in moving forward. If the board decides to move that in that direction and, and build a replacement school, then obviously those plans would then be developed. We've done some initial uh, engineering work, so we have some preliminary ideas. We've had our transportation, somebody said, have the bus drivers come out and take a look. Our transportation people have looked at that. Um, there are, um, uh, there's, there's a lot more work and planning that has to be done, but we have to decide which way we're going to go first. Well, is, I guess my question would be is if, if this requires a lot of road restructuring or rebuilding or revamping, rerouting or whatever it requires, is that a cost to the, to the school, to the city, to the county? To who, who pays for all this? Yes, sir. Technically, the school board cannot pay for uh, road improvements. There's some state statute that's in place. And, um, you know, we've had some initial conversations uh, with the city. We haven't had any kind of direct conversations with the Georgia Department of Transportation. Uh, at this juncture, we're still waiting to decide which way we want to go for the things that we do control. And that's looking at the actual facility that our children and our teachers would be working in, the school itself. But what, what, shouldn't some of these things be handled ahead of time to, to determine whether you're going to put an additional burden on the city of Peachtree City for the taxpayers and uh, DOT? And I mean, you, you're right there at 54, tremendous amount of traffic. You got a small road coming out of the back end, I understand, Carriage Lane, which is very little bit more than a driveway, and it ties in where the high school traffic comes and goes off in Walt Banks in 54. And I mean, if this requires a lot of additional work and construction and cost, shouldn't that be considered ahead of time as to, I mean, you make a decision you're going to do this, and you go ahead with it, you already own the property. Mm -hmm. okay. And then find out that it's just not feasible. 
I mean, it sounds like we're getting the cart before the horse. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Any other comments? I'm Jan Williams, and I live on Carriage Lane as well. Just one point that I haven't heard spoken tonight was the, um, you know, I'm able to walk um, to the gym now from Carriage Lane, World Gym, so I see every day that big office complex as well that's not even complete yet. And so we haven't even thought about how much that's going to impact our traffic as well, to include that in our decision-making process too. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm Mary Ann Browning, and I'm a resident of Peachtree City. Um, and thank you for your concern. And this is the second time I have gone to a session on this project. And the first one, uh, which was held in Peachtree City, two board members were present, Dr. Markham and uh, Mr. Hollowell, and they expressed the opinions and hopes, and the opinions that Booth was too small, and the hope that there would be additional funding. But we did not get specifics as to exactly how much funding the state would be providing, and also if there were any alternatives to the renovations. Yes, Booth is small. I taught there for 15 years not too long ago and loved every minute. Uh, yes, it's small, but yes, we were flexible and we handled it. Um, are there any alternatives? The, the New renovations look fabulous, but, you know, it's a little far-fetched. I cannot believe with an, there has been no, I, rather, let me restate that. I have not seen an item by item uh, statement as to exactly what each part of the renovation would be that would make it so costly. I also have not seen any item-by-item item statements that would indicate how the new building would be so economical. Um, you know, getting buses in on a dirt road, I don't think so. Uh, the traffic of parents driving their kids to school, uh, that's not going to work well with a dirt road. It's got to involve state, county expenditures in addition to school expenditures. And I would like to see a more detailed explanation as to where the money is coming from and exactly what the alternatives would be. Uh, the plan for renovation looks fantastic. However, is all of that necessary? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and conclude this part of the public hearing. If you. Ben Nelm, Citizen News. Um, on the Q&A that you had online, which you have online for this meeting, and it's going to be brought up apparently the next meeting under the information section. On the Q&A, page two, 4A, what is the impact of the tra in, um, on traffic in the area? Preliminary traffic studies have been completed by the school district and communicated to the city, which is great. Trouble is, as of 11 a.m. this morning, the city hadn't received anything from you guys. So I've already made a request for the traffic studies, preliminary. So when can the city expect to get them and when can we? I don't have any problems. Since we ben, say ben, here, we've already given it to you've them. You've received the information today, right? Not unless it's since I left home to come over here. Okay, my understanding was is that information was sent to you today. And if it wasn't, then I'll make sure that it gets to you and... Uh, and to the city. And the cities, uh, we've had conversations with them, uh, but uh, I don't know what 
the engineers in the city have talked. There have been some other conversations where we weren't at the table when those conversations right, were right. being held. Yeah, and I bring this up because obviously, I mean, I've driven down Stagecoach. It's a, it's a little tiny path, and it's long, and carriage runs around, and you've got Robinson Road intersection, you've got Highway 54 mm -hmm. at Carriage and at Robinson. It's a lot of money. So that's how we're curious. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and conclude this, um, this hearing. We have another one at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, if you didn't get to make a comment tonight, you can always sign up for the public comment section at our regular board meeting, which is going to start here in just a few minutes. Without any... Um, okay. Without any objection, we're adjourned.